Hi, my name is Sam Dhanesh Ekran and welcome to this video series. In this video, let us take a look at the prominent architecture that's being used in the IT industry. And that's called client server architecture. In this architecture, there will be one or more server serving multiple clients. The server will have the server component of an application while the client pieces will be installed with the client piece of that software. For example, if I make a server as just a file server, then there needs to be a piece of code running in the server computer which enables the sharing of files from it. Then another piece of code that needs to be installed in all the client computers which can consume those shared files. In a Windows environment, that piece of code is the inbuilt Windows File Explorer in both the Windows Server Operating System as well as the Client Operating System. Okay, so that piece is inbuilt. However, applications were written using this client server architecture. For example, Microsoft developed a server software called Microsoft Exchange Server. It is essentially an email server and it can reside on its own dedicated powerful host. This piece of software is a server component of the whole email system. For the clients to access their emails, they needed to have their client component called Microsoft Outlook and that needs to be installed on their computers. So whenever they invoked their Outlook software, it would connect to the email server, which is Microsoft Exchange server and fetch the emails. Configurations are needed between both the server software and the client software for this to work. Usually, the IT administrators are responsible for this to work. Here, we can also refer the Exchange server as an application server. Why? Basically, it serves an application to the network. Like that, many applications were born. A company could write its own accounting application software. Then the server code of that software can be installed in a powerful computer. And the client software code can be installed in the client pieces. Also, a company could buy a sales application available in the market and install it. They could install the server piece of that software in the same computer where accounting application server is running or they can install it on its own dedicated server computer. It depends on their need. But they would need to install the corresponding client software in the client computers. This worked well for a couple of years from early 90s to mid 90s. However, as the need for more and faster processing kept growing, this model had some disadvantages that needed attention. For example, an environment with a large number of application servers needed the respective clients to be installed on the client computers. Also, 
the clients may be running different operating systems. Some were running Windows 3.11, some were running Windows 95, and some running Linux, Mac OS, IBM OS 2, etc. So the application developers needed to create a client version for each of these client operating systems. Also, the client computers were getting overloaded with many client softwares being installed in there. And these applications stored data within themselves, meaning that they were also responsible for serving the data. For example, this application server, accounting application server, also stored the data within itself and was also responsible for managing the data. Okay, let me repeat. For example, the accounting application has to store all the accounting information somewhere, right? So they had their own inbuilt piece of code for that. And it became cumbersome to manage as the data grew larger. The application servers started performing poorly. Also, they were not able to share the data between applications. For example, the data stored by the accounting application cannot be read by sales application if they wanted to. To solve that issue, they started using database server software which followed a certain standard. They would install database servers on the same application server host and make the applications use the database server software to store and manage the data. The database server software would manage the data efficiently and it allowed the data sharing between many applications. But it still resided on the same host where the application servers were running though you took care of the performance and sharing issue, uh, it still resided on the same computer. Let me simplify the diagram a little bit in the interest of space. In this picture, the database server got its own powerful server computer. So the client will contact the application server which will serve the application to the client and whenever it needs to access the underlying data the application server will contact the database server process it and will send the data to the client so this is actually a three tier architecture but the evolution of it architecture did not just stop there. With internet becoming a major force not only in the IT industry but also in the human way of life, the architecture evolved much further. For example, web servers came into the picture and they became the front line for any application. Every application became a web compliant application, meaning that they can be accessed and run by just a web browser. So the need for multiple clients to be installed on a client PC is gone. Like we don't need to install multiple clients. All we needed was just a browser. So this took care of the issue of developing multiple versions of client for multiple operating systems. The client's browser, which could be Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, would connect to the web server. The web server may or may not have application server running on the same computer. If it's not, then it will contact the application server. The application server will then contact the database server 
for its data and that's how processing happened currently i mean that's the year 2020 it's common to see multiple web servers connecting to multiple application servers and multiple database servers so there could be many tiers between a request that gets originated from a client's browser to the answer it received that's the reason this type of architecture is called as n tier architecture where n being any number as designed by the it architecture team of that system but for me everything is a client server architecture each tier interacts with one another as both a server and a client meaning that they provide information and get information now let's look at the issues have we tackled all this yes we do not have multiple versions of clients since we have powerful database software running on their own powerful computers we have addressed the performance problem that we had from the previous configuration of having both the application server and database server residing on the same machine the database server can also share the data to numerous applications as needed so are we happy no things evolve sometimes we evolve by going back to older model how look at your smartphone it could be iphone or android doesn't matter they may have at least 20 individual apps preloaded then you may have already downloaded another 20 or so just saying these are similar to having multiple client software in the pc yet apps are useful rather than going to their websites from the smartphone for example you can browse youtube using your phone's internet browser or just download the youtube app from the app store and use it here the app will have everything optimized for youtube's content and may be much more efficient to use rather than using it through your phone's browser however if you go back to your laptop or desktop you may find that your browser is much better in browsing youtube videos than using a desktop version of youtube app if there is any bottom line is in it architecture evolution is constant it's kind of like change is the only constant thing and it doesn't hesitate to go back in time thank you for watching